My name is Brian Josephs. I'm the Vice President of North America here at Sport Radar, and we are so excited to have you all here today. Uh, you know, today is really about you, our clients and partners, and Sport Radar operates at the center of the sports ecosystem, and we've designed our Connect events to bring together the best and the brightest across the industry to discuss the challenges, the opportunities, the trends that we all encounter on a daily basis. So today, you'll have the opportunity to gain insight into AI from Sport Radar's new Chief Technology and AI Officer, Beishad Bizadi. And after that, we will dive into fan engagement and discuss strategies that you can use to capture the time and attention of sports fans in an incredibly competitive digital environment. From there, we'll explore personalization and the role that that plays in personalizing the fan experience and what data and technology can do to help enable just that. And then last, but certainly not least, our league partners will discuss the current media rights landscape and the challenges and the opportunities as that space evolves. So we have a jam-packed day. We're so excited that you're here and that you've joined us. A couple quick housekeeping items before we get started. First, Wi-Fi information is on the back of your badge. Uh, if you have a bag or a coat that you'd like to check, there's space to do that back in the Delta Club. Uh, between each session, we'll have about 20 or 30 minutes that you can you know, network with each other or, or go check out the, the JP Morgan Club for some refreshments. And then at the end of the day, uh, you're all invited back to the Delta Club for a happy hour uh, that we're all very much looking forward to. Uh, if you choose to post about uh, today's event on social media, we'd encourage you to use the hashtag SRConnect and uh, go ahead and put that out there. Uh, but today, again, just thank you so much for coming. We're really excited uh, for the conversations and everything that we'll dive into. And without further ado, please help me in welcoming Jacob Feldman from Sportico and Sport Radar Space Shot to the stage to go ahead and get us started. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Uh, really excited to kick off th this conversation with, with a nice chat with Bashad. And, and I want to first off welcome you to the world of sports. As, as Brian mentioned, you're what, less than three months into this gig. Is that right? Um, after how long was it at, at Google that you spent in, in your last job? Um, yeah, it was uh, close to 18 years at Google and now close to three months here. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, well, welcome to the world of sports. We'll, we'll, we'll greet you kindly this afternoon. We won't, won't take it too hard on you. We won't grill you. We'll see how much information on AI we can get out of you in, in 30 minutes. I have been a sport fan for my life, so <laughs> <laughs> so we can also go and talk sport if you have questions. Yes, of course we will. We will do that too. So 18 years at Google, you've obviously seen this technology evolve and you've seen AI really enter and become the center when we think about tech and sports or, or any industry. How did you see artificial intelligence evolve over the last 10 years? Yeah, so uh, there has been really, you know, phases that we have been seeing. You know, there was a phase where uh, machine learning and you know deep learning started to become really you know a usable when it's for image recognition, textual classification, natural language understanding, and so on. So at that moment, actually, I got got started to be more involved on. Initially, I was working on the search web search ranking, and then my mission became use this new tech in order to build uh, the future of search. Mm. That's uh, that's where as part of uh, as part of. Uh, uh, my works there, we actually started Google Assistant. Uh, so that work started in Zurich. This is where I'm living uh, for Google. Uh, uh, I have been living for the past many years. And, uh, and this was basically using speech recognition, which started to become usable now as an interface to you know, work with mobiles. A bit later, a couple of years later, image recognition reached that level. So Google Lens was the next product that we started. Um, and these were all you know, AI first products that Google was building for consumers, of course. And, uh, and, of, and, and my last two, three years was on the Google Cloud side, leading applied AI for Google Cloud. And that's where you know, we really are we're, we're helping all the other types of industries and companies to use AI. And, uh, and obviously, you know, generative AI happened, that we can talk about it, uh, you know, which changed everything, because all of a sudden, there is much more interest, much more accessibility to, uh, to the AI. And uh, that has been you know, keeping me and my teams busy at Google for the past few years. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so deep learning, machine learning, computer vision, generative AI. We're going to try to get to all those terms, as many as we can. But tell me, again, working at Google Cloud, you're seeing this AI technology be deployed across a lot of industries. 
how much have you seen it impact sports so far, and what made you interested in focusing on the potential of AI in sports? Yeah, so um, I mean, uh, every industry I think is going to be heavily disrupted by, by the new wave of generative AI. It's without any exception. And uh, again, being a sport fan and learning when I you know, get more uh, connected to sport radar and understand and start to learning about you know, really being the, the top leader in the world in terms of uh, the amount of data uh, that, that uh, we have about all the sportive events which is uh, happening in the world, around a million games uh, uh, every year, and, and actually the amount of the deep data that we collect and build products on top of those, I think that's, that's you know, for some computer scientists, this is like a gold mine. You just, just you know, you get, you know, you, you get, you know, super excited. So I wanted to uh, focus more on one industry and the sport being, you know, something which, you know, at the personal level I have been liking it, of course, and Sport Radar was a very natural and interesting option for me to, you know, to, uh, to, to basically joining and trying to, trying to help actually existing groups of people who have been doing lots of great work already on AI also uh, to actually expand that impact. Yeah, one of the questions I get a lot or conversations I have a lot with folks working in sports is, look, we don't, we're not building these models ourselves if we're working at a team or, or a brand. What can we do to make sure we're getting the most out of whatever's coming out of the tech industry? And I'm curious for you how important you think it is to make sure data is being captured and data is being captured the right way when it comes to leveraging AI technology, both in the past, now, and, and going forward. Yeah. No, I think that, that you know the data strategy is always you know one of the top things when it comes into into you know building with AI and using AI. So there are certainly more and more problems for which you can use out of box models. So that for those, I guess you know things are fine. Mm. But as soon as you want to make sure that okay, I'm talking to this chatbot and this chatbot understands the sports, mm. you have to have you know sports data to be there. You want to. Do you don't want you have been hearing all these terms like hallucination, for example, and so on. All those things can get resolved by really having access to the right, you know, trustable real-time data. And I think what's a unique at uh, Sport Radar is also the real-timeness of this data, which for many applications, such as you know, you know, the betting industry, it's very critical, uh, or for you know, augmenting you know the uh, uh, the, the the visual streams that we're having. But uh, but but that that's 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 really the first. This is you know, having the data means that you can build specific for that industry, you can uh, you can you know fine tune uh, per se you know the the solutions for which is working for uh, for that industry, which is you know uh, 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 you know would be you know uh, very hard otherwise without right. that data. Absolutely, absolutely. So again, you're about ten weeks in, but to date so far, what have you learned about what Sport Radar is doing already with, with, with AI? No, I think what what actually this was one of the things which you know I knew a bit of course mm -hmm. from before joining, but. I certainly got, you know, uh, and I have some of the colleagues, I guess, here too, I'm very positively, you know, impressed by mm -hmm. the amount of actually AI which is already happening in our in uh, in sport radar. So, you know, this this ranges from a spectrum of, you know, uh, of uh, applications from data collection. Uh, so again, I talked about real time live data collections. Computer vision is helping there mm -hmm. to collect more data, deeper data. You know. Uh, obviously, speeds, you know, angles, you know, all, ty all types of things that you can extract, you know, the higher sense of that. Two, you know, making sense and um, extract insights from, you know, everything which is happening. Uh, two, you know, computer vision being used for actually, you know, um, augmenting, you know, the, the, the types of live stream or a broadcast yeah. that we are having. We have a product called Foresights. This is for, you know, injecting insights that we are extracting. Uh, from uh, from uh, from the sports into into the uh, into the videos itself, it just makes you know it shows a glimpse into what the future of you know sports uh, consumption will be. Mm. Obviously, we're using also AI on everything related to odds for predicting odds, building odds for the risk management, for classifying profiles of players, and helping you know the uh, the uh, 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 the bookmakers to actually you know be be, be managing their risks there. We're using odds for, sorry, we're using uh, AI for, um, for performance tracking, for coaching. Mm -hmm. um, so again, lots of data to, per player-based, uh, team-based, helping for the strategies and so on. Uh, we're using AI for, uh, for marketing and ads, uh, a big, big theme, you know, really, you know, at a personalized level, you want to target and you want to, uh, you want to base on the past, his, past history of interactions and, uh, and uh, you know, and 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 the, the uh, you know the preference of a particular you know users uh, really you know targets ads in the right way. And we work to use AI also in integrity, which may be keeping sports clean. You know, 
Um, uh, I'm very actually excited and proud of the work that the team is doing there. You know, it's uh, uh, really identifying, you know, on one hand, things such as match fixing, which is happening, uh, sadly, <laughs> uh, um, uh, from time to time. Uh, and, uh, but also, you know, trying to keep actually the, uh, even online, you know, pr um, protecting, you know, players and teams and referees uh, from online abuse uh, in terms of, you know, attacks which might happen, you know, online and so on. So we're, we're looking into all these ranges, and I think these are some, you know, again, it, the main point is that it's really all ranges of application yes. from the data to all of the more complex solutions. And I think there is much more of smaller pieces that here and there that AI is being used. So right. it's quite a bit happening it's, it's already. basically everywhere is what it sounds it like. Is everywhere. Every business department is, is doing something, looking at this in, in some, sort of, exactly. some sort of way. So obviously they brought you in, so I imagine Sport Radar is looking to do even more w with AI. Where are you focused now? Where do you see a lot of potential gains to be made when it comes to either bringing AI somewhere it hasn't been or changing the way it is interacting with, with the business that exists today? Yeah, no, I think there are certainly, you know, exciting directions which the teams have already been started and I'm very happy to be joining and helping, you know, uh, and contributing and, you know, moving, going bigger there. Uh, several to mention, I think uh, certainly I'm very excited about uh, the uh, hyper-personalization. Mm. And I think we have been hearing a lot about that, you know, personalization for many years. For many years, personalization had meant to be, you know, really being about, you know, you know, Bucket, uh, classifying users into five buckets and uh, try to treat them depending on the bucket that they fall into. Yeah. These days we're talking really about ultra hyper personalization thanks to Gen AI which makes it, makes it possible. Which that at a high level means that for every person try to make content which is optimized for that person. Make recommendations which is optimized for that person. It's really at person level and that's, uh, that's now computationally become feasible which is something which was not possible before. Even the way that we show things, not just you know, the content, you know, is it 10 numbers, 10 pictures and so on. So I think that's, that's, uh, that's really you know, uh, one big direction and, and theme that we're looking into. Um, secondly, is about, again, really about the future of uh, sports consumptions. Mm -hmm. You know, how, how do we think that in the future we're seeing exactly the same uh, video that we're seeing today, which is quite similar to uh, quite often to, you know, 20 years ago. Of course, there has been advances happening, but uh, with all this big jump that we're seeing in, you know, in AI, you know, changing everything, it's very, very imaginable and uh, that that is not necessarily how we will be consuming in the future. Mm -hmm. What that means is that, you know, yes, we will have overlays of all types of information that we just talked about, you know, whether it's the speed and, you know, uh, uh, speed or tactics or whatever angles and so on, but also it could also mean that hey, you can all of a sudden, you know, see the replay of a part of a game yeah. from any different angle. Imagine that, you know, at any point for, for a video, of a sport video that you're watching, you can just turn from any points and just watch exactly what happens. And those things is actually generated mm -hmm. with generative AI and so on. Um, I think content generation is also generally getting, you know, significantly uh, easier. And, and I think we will, and, and, you know, to the next level, you know, in terms of, you know, generating, you know, again, we talked about personal, personalized content, but also the highlights generations, commentary generations in all language, you know, marketing material generation. So all types of content generations, you know, really will be to the next level of, uh, of, um, um, of you know, uh, of scaling and of quality in some sense. And, uh, and I think, you know, all of the other actually aspects that we talked about, you know, for the ongoing works, which is coaching, whether it's the odds related work, whether it's, you know, strategies, well, it's also, I think all of those will also still get, you know, uh, and, uh, and again, as a, as, as, a, as a company, we do want to make sure that we improve and continue to be a leader, you know, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, sports technology and AI development. Yeah. You mentioned generative AI a little bit. I'm curious, we can, let's dive into that for, for a few minutes here. For you personally, when did you begin to recognize the, the potential power, the, the possibility of generative AI? Yeah, so it's, it's interesting because at Google, we, um, we had something which was like ChatGPT a couple of years before ChatGPT. <laughs> and, uh, and we knew this is super powerful. Mm. And, um, uh, but we were actually worried about that this, uh, that this is very powerful and uh, how exactly, you know, this, how and when this could actually become in, you know, in uh, consumers' hands and people's hands, right? So um, uh, what happened, honestly, is ChatGPT from OpenAI, great work, certainly was a wake-up call that, oh, wow, this is really, you know, 
people once you once you put a, such a powerful tool in front of you know the in in front of everyone's hands. Yes, it has challenges and problems. I'm sure that you know OpenAI and not many other companies would not necessarily be even today okay with some of the problems that ChatGPT had on day one. Mm. Uh, but uh, but all of a sudden it shows that okay no the world is welcoming this because this is powerful. It can help everything. Mm -hmm. And I think that that really was I would say the time that you know so uh, for Google across you know across you know the consumer side, but also when I was at Google Cloud and the Google Cloud side. Oh wow, this is so powerful. Everyone wants it. Let's make it in a safe and responsible way available to everyone um, and I think there is foundationally something different I guess maybe you know for the audience here now I can also talk a couple of words on you know um, in in the old time when we talk about AI typically we choose a problem and we uh, we collect lots of data we hire you know PhDs of uh, machine learning and computer science to go and build and tune for that specific problem that problem could be Let's say a coroner detection. Because we're talking about you know sports here, or it could be a, a cat detector, a classifier which just sees a picture and says, "Is it a cat or not?" Right? That that's a, that's an old world. Yeah. Um, this is this is called machine learning, and it's all quite often deep learning is also that. Mm -hmm. Before that, people were writing, you know, and of course also today, writing traditional programming. Programming means that you write all the instructions to generate a code, right? So machine learning made something. It's very hard to write a program to detect you know, what is a cat. Mm. Uh, it's very, very hard because all the rules is very hard. Right. And the different cats, colors, different the, shapes. Uh, yeah. you, the eyes might not be visible. They tell you, know, you, if you write rules, all of a sudden you see a picture, you see that the rules is not respected and so on. So what happens with generative AI is that some companies like Google, OpenAI and others came and, uh, and put, you know, said that, okay, we build a model by injecting every available source of data in the world. So we basically, uh, make these large language models, foundation models, by asking this thing uh, to go and read and practice uh, constantly. So, uh, so, so it has. Imagine this is a thing which has gone and read the whole internet. <laughs> now, because and has been seeing every image which is on the internet, and has been seeing every videos which is on the internet. So, because it has done that, as a result of that, now it's able to solve lots of problems. So, the model is already pre-built. Now the, 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 uh, the challenge is that how to get these pre-built models and then use it for solving different problems or fine tune it for the specific industries uh, of use cases. Mm. So these models can now, you know, can up out of box detect many different things. They can, uh, you know, you don't need to develop any more object classifiers really. They, are, they understand things more and more or less like a humans. They can talk like humans, they can listen like humans, they can hear like humans. So one of my, you know, one of my, or actually I would say, you know, Superhumans in some sense. You know, one of my when we talk about sports, you know, I'm really looking forward and want, you know, would love Sport Radar to be also a, a key player here uh, to to really look into, you know, building, you know, the brains of, you know, sports. You know, this is, you know, this is a superhuman brains which, you know, ask, you know, any questions about any sport game which happens so far. Imagine a brain which watches a game and sees better than us humans what's happening in the game. All the details, you know, strategies and so on, and can, you know. And you know, can you know, and can we can uh, use it for you know, um, uh, you know, combining all different types of big data from everywhere, you know, and answering all types of questions, and use it for all types of you know, problems that we're solving. So the the, the reality is that you know the the barrier uh, to use these models is much lower because now the main tuning has been happening, mm -hmm. so it's easier to get in. But but the, the the application is really across all industries. Every single industry will get disrupted. Is you know is in process of. There is no industry, obviously not sport either, uh, that will not be, you know, that five years from now will not see that it's very, very different than, than before. And in your role as, as CTO, I'm curious the internal applications you potentially see, especially on the generative, yeah. AI, generative AI side, and, and this I think is relevant to anybody who's, who's leading their own teams and thinking about how to implement this within their own operation. No, absolutely. I think the, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the actually the big, you know, benefits and uh, the top use cases of generative AI these days is actually about you know, improving operations efficiency of for different senses of that, you know, ranging from, you know, you have, uh, you have developers who are writing, let's say a program and code. These days, the Gen AI can help the same developers to write codes much faster. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, typically a programmer might write a hundred lines of code, 400 lines of test. The test is to make sure the code is uh, doing what it is supposed to do. So that if later another developer comes and changes the code, then this test will capture that. Now, all of the test these days is 
generated by generative AI. Mm. Remember, 100 lines written and then 400 times automatically generated. So at Google, but also at many other companies going for going more and more, developers are using that. You know, for content generation, presentation generation, document generation, working with Excel in a spreadsheet, co-pilots, you know, uh, types of projects you have been most certainly hearing. Um, you know, for automations of things such as, you know, um, support systems, you know, that we, you know, whether you're calling a human to, uh, that might, you know, be delayed, not necessarily accurate, you know, not 24 seven is available to all types of questions. You can have, you know, automated support systems uh, for that front. So we certainly are looking into all of the above uh, at, uh, at, uh, at sport radars. Heavily, we want to uh, uh, improve our internal efficiencies as well as, of course, try to use and uh, in add Gen AI into, uh, into the, uh, uh, into the products, the external products. But, but the, the certainly, the, perhaps it's also the less risky part, you know, uh, as you know, instead of really saying that, okay, we replace our app or our website <laughs> with a chatbot or with yeah. a or the, with a brain, Gen AI brain, which is doing that. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a step one that many companies and associations are taking. Is that okay? Let's see the benefits of Gen AI internally. <laughs> and I can tell you, and again, I have been working in my previous job as many many companies are already seeing that for types of use cases like coding. Uh, customer support, content generation, mm -hmm. uh, or data analysis. You can ask these models to go and read these 50 documents and extract X and Y and Z for me. Yeah. You can help them, you're a journalist, you know, to write, to help me writing. Of course. To come up with good questions. This is a list of questions I want to ask, what else I should be asking. So this I should have done that, could have had a better exactly. conversation. Yeah. Oh, it's not, you have not? <laughs> I thought. Let me go I back, yeah, I'll come back on the last couple. It felt a Gen AI generated, oh, so. I'll take that as a compliment. Uh, it is, you know, I actually think it's a, it is a compliment because yeah. um, I, it's, um, it's hard to believe, but Gen AI is for real more creative than, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, creative humans. For you know, sure. This is why they can write, you know, like poems like Shakespeare. And it's not that computational, it's not a very complex thing. They have been, as I said, they have been reading internet. They have been reading Shakespeare all the time and practicing. So they know how roughly Shakespeare words, what words comes after what words. Yeah, yeah. But you know, of course, you know, for humans, some such things is, is harder. And that, I think, is one of the, to me, challenges of this moment is, okay, we have this model that can literally do basically anything you ask it to with some limitations. So it seems to me the challenge is deciding what to ask of it. So I'm curious for you, the advice you've given to others, the way you personally think about how to decide which challenges to assign to AI and, and where the wins are right now with, with the technology yeah. available? No, a very good question. I think it's, um, um, it's actually not easy to, oh, sorry, it's, a, <laughs> it's not the right approach to say that, yes, these models are very powerful, therefore, let's give them the whole problem. Mm -hmm. Because as you mentioned, there are actually problems, downsides uh, with this. They can, you know, you need to really work hard and have used certain techniques to remove, you know, the so-called hallucination. You know, the cost is a factor. It's not true that everything, you know, you can every second call, uh, ask the biggest models in the world to, you know, to run for you all this, you know, calculation. Yeah. You know, the, uh, you, want, you don't want a black box. Mm -hmm. You want something that, you know, two weeks from now, if you decide to change something, how do you go and change it? So I think there's an art of how to combine, you know, the traditional code, coding with the traditional program uh, machine learning with, with the generative AI. I think Gen AI is generally useful for where you, content generation is obviously a very good use case of that, the, when the human senses types of things, reading, writing, and uh, needs, uh, and you will become a differentiator. I think that's, that's, uh, that, that's a big part. I would also say organizationally, and again, that's the same in, you know, in Sport Radar also, and with other companies I worked with, mm -hmm. we can come up with lots of different use cases. Yeah. Oh, I want to use Gen AI here. Uh, HR wants to use it for, uh, for the here, here. Sales wants to use it for here, here, here. Like, and the list will become hundreds of lines. And I'm sure that many of you might have already have seen those lists. And it just becomes, you know, if you go as a company and say that, okay, we try these 500 things, it just becomes unmanageable. Right. And you know, perhaps we use this model and then later the other model, so more tech depth and so on. So we're part of the things that you know, practices is also really looking into you know, where the biggest impacts are, focus, uh, focus on door, you know, on those techs, you know, you know, get, get uh, confidence, it's right on that. And things are changing very fast. That's yeah. the other channel, ch challenge. You know, a year ago, <laughs> Uh, the solutions with Gen AI would be a bit different than today's solutions. You might use different models, you might use you know, different texts around the models and so on. 
you know, we have this thing called prompt size. This is the input to the models. Uh, when, the, uh, when the first NI came, the model was, that one was uh, 4K, like 4,000 words. And then at some point it became 65,000, uh, 65K. Everyone was, all developers, super excited. Now we can solve many different problems. These days it's 2 million. Yeah. And now if you say that I have a solution for which it needs you know, 10 million, this certainly will happen. You should just look at the trend of how you know, Google, Microsoft, and everyone else are doing. So, so again, that's, that's, uh, these are some you know, uh, practices to, to, uh, to, to pay attention to. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. And that was the next thing I was gonna ask you is right now where are you seeing change? I think this has been so disruptive already, but it's still, for a lot of people, is in the world of the theoretical of in a couple of years we'll be able to do this, we'll be able to do that. Where are you seeing right now the, the, the growth and the possibility? Um, I think actually it's, you know, it's uh, the, uh, on, on the generative AI side, you mean? Yeah, or, yeah. yeah, or across the board. Yeah, um, uh, I think that the, the, that's, that's already, I think, in my opinion, is, uh, is ready to be aggressively and heavily deployed today. Yeah. Um, um, uh, so, so in the sense that this is really, you know, in my lifetime, mm -hmm. at, uh, at, at my business lifetime or scientific lifetime, certainly is the biggest jump I have seen. Really? So, uh, so uh, because a step jump. So it's a real yeah. step. So it's really things are possible, which was not possible five years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I think you know, it's okay by the way to not be first in my opinion uh, in this in this, in this uh, you know new revolution because. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, there are fast movers. You're learning that you know what went wrong and here and there, uh, but but you don't want to be last, you know, because again, this is changing. You know, again, many different groups are looking into that. Um, yeah, I think I think that's uh, that's what I would say here. Yeah, and for you, what, what where do you see Sport Radar's role in that implementation, both internally and then in the wider sports world? Yeah, certainly. Again, as uh, you know, as the uh, company with the. Uh, with, I would say, the biggest choice of uh, works on sports data mm -hmm. and the technology around the data, I would love, you know, also at the personal level, to, <laughs> to continue to keep that leadership expanded, help actually the overall, you know, um, um, industry to, to grow, um, to, you know, to be really, you know, contribute in building that brains of sports, which I talked about, to, to contribute in, you know, defining uh, uh, the future of sports consumption, uh, to help other companies also to build, you know, AI related to sports, uh, um, to you know, uh, the customer experience and the user journeys, you know, really built in the AI in those, you know, uh, 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 ultimate, you know, user journeys uh, scenarios. I think later today we might be hearing about fan engagement. Yeah. Really, uh, you know, use AI in where where the experience is. You know, we don't need to replace existing. Uh, um, experiences with a chatbot. Chatbot is not what we will be interacting to with. Mm. These chatbots are just the brains that could be behind those. You know, on a mobile phone, design something which is best for a mobile phone. You know, maybe swipe up and contents are coming and so on. But again, the the content themselves might be generated by generative AI and how things are coming there. I do think again, Sport Radar. You know, we certainly want to also with our history uh, um, and, and footprint on the integrity part. You know, AI comes with risks also. We certainly do want to be a player in making sure that while we use AI and uh, promote AI to aggressively be used in sports tech, mm -hmm. also make sure that sports uh, AI is being used in a responsible way mm -hmm. uh, in the sports tech. Um, and, uh, and I think, you know, there is opportunities for uh, for you know, uh, uh, new products to be built. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's it's done not just you know doing the uh, 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 existing product uh, you know better, but also you know new products and new experiences which was not possible to be built before. Certain quiz games, you know, experiences, which was very hard to imagine how we built it today might become very possible uh, to build it. You know, um, so uh, would love to play a central role. Basically yeah, in this, yeah. Uh, um, future. Absolutely. And what is your advice to companies that maybe don't have the technical firepower that a sport radar does or, or, or Google does, how, how should they, besides maybe hiring an AI officer of their own, how should they prepare themselves for, for this moment to, to get the most out of it? Yeah, I guess they should work with sport radar. Yes, of course, uh, step, step one. Uh, yeah. That's a step one, that's yeah. a top advice. Um, but um, uh, I, I think, you know, I, I think it's, it's important to have some governance at a company level. Again, dep it depends, it always depends, you know, if you're a smaller company, bigger company, or, you know, um, um, if, if you do have, if you plan to build, you know, um, AI solutions, uh, it's good to have certain level of governance. You know, my first you know, uh, snippet uh, is actually was very serious comment. I don't think, you know, I think there is lots of, 
lots of um, um, lots of AI building, which will be about you know using what's available through you know partnerships, other companies, and so on. And then of course add you know your connected. Okay, what can I take this uh, AI model from Sport Radar, let's say for example, and connect it to the services or the uh, to the to the data which we have to generate that uh, that particular applications. Um, um, uh, but but you know yeah some some level of AI governance is good to have so that you don't go you don't go crazy too too big on every direction. But I don't think you know I think if you are a very bigger company, certainly cheap AI officer is a most likely the the newest uh, grow, highest growing uh, yeah, category, you know, C level yeah. role that we we're seeing. Uh, but I don't think that if you're in you know, a company of 50 people, you need one. Uh, so just to be you know, uh, um, um, clear on that front. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and my last question for you, uh, you, know, you mentioned, again, three, four years ago, I think this was a disruptive category, a game changer, a step change, the biggest change you've seen in, in your working career. At this point, do you feel like we're on a predictable trajectory where you feel like you can see where, how this technology is going to work in a year? Or do you feel like there are still more surprises, shocks, game changing, you know, miracles of science type discoveries to, to be found in the next couple of years? I, I think certainly we will see more. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, given, if, you know, again, we saw, so there is a, gen, there is a big impact of Gen AI. Mm -hmm. That was the biggest, you know, shock here. But even in the past two and a half years, we have seen so many times of, oh, wow, we couldn't believe the prompt size can be this. Mm. Oh, wow, we couldn't believe, uh, you know, just uh, I read in you know, news, perhaps some of you have seen, small company of five, six people uh, with certain tech, uh, you know, they built a super small model, which on many fronts can actually compete with some of the large models. Mm. So again, that's a surprise, you know. So we will see, because of the amount of investment which is happening on AI, and, and trying to get out of this genetic, we certainly will get, see, you know, more, more you know, um, uh, positive surprises. You know, I per personally, I'm super excited about the impact of this whole erosion on healthcare. I mm. do believe that 10 years from now, when we look back, we will see that some of the diseases have been, you know, um, um, uh, cured thanks to actually this revolution which is happening. So maybe yeah. that is the biggest thing that happened, you know, the past 10 years, if you look back for it. But whenever in my life I try to predict what the big things happen in the next three years, I was wrong. So <laughs> I will not try to predict, you know, that. But I, again, I'm certain, certain that uh, sports technology will be heavily uh, disrupted and, uh, and we Sport Radar are very serious on having AI to be uh, part of our agenda and would love to work with everyone else to uh, generate, you know, your good, useful products yes. for, for the fans. Fantastic. Well, Bashad, thank you so much for joining us. Um, <laughs> You're going to be around all afternoon, so people can come up and ask questions. And if you don't know what to ask, evidently, you can ask AI what to ask. Uh, your questions are probably or, better than mine. So. And likewise, when I don't know what to answer, I ask AI to There you go. Fantastic. Well, thank you guys so much. We'll be back in 20 minutes.